All right. One of the things that I wanted to address before actually jumping into the baking is way back when I was just starting this, I screwed up the um, the scaling so everything got a little bit squashed uh, laterally. And what I see now is I've actually got some collapsing that probably happened from one of my merge operations. Uh, so I went ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. And I got a that basically that same piece of geometry just from the original, you know, the original source. And I am going to do my very best to get it dialed in. Looks like I've got that that angle on the uh, again, this is sort of slanted a little bit. So I'm just gonna go to wireframe and do my best to get it aligned properly. Doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of good enough. And you can see it's a little bit off center. And we want to make sure that we don't have any issues with gaps like that. So I'm actually going to shrink it down a little bit because I want there to be a little bit more breathing room on the sides here. And then I'm just going to grab these verts and just sort of move it down a little bit. So we get a nice tight seal there. We'll do the same thing up here. If you hold control and shift, you can add to your selection. And then this stuff maybe we just do a little a little scale. So I haven't actually messed with the the inside stuff at all. It's just a modification to the plane that it all talks to. So that should be better. And then I was thinking these things, these little circles here, they feel a little bit boring. So I thought I might try just throwing Oh, and I'm going to need to actually go to my side view, get this stuff aligned again. And the easiest way to do that is just something like this. And this is all getting baked down to a flat plane, so it doesn't really, uh, it's, it's mostly just more detail so it doesn't look as boring. Things still a little bit more dynamic happening in here. And then I'm just going to duplicate this stuff around. So that's just control D. And this is, you know, if you've got an opportunity in the geometry that you chose to do something similar, then I would encourage you to do it. But if you don't, then don't worry about it. And again, because this isn't really breaking the silhouette, I don't need to do anything different on my retop. It's all basically, it's just gonna, it's just gonna work perfectly. Just trying to get these things a little bit better centered. All right, well, I don't know if that's better or not, but you know, whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and now what we need to do is add material ID color. So what this is gonna help us do is in the next phase after we've done our, our bakes and painter is we are going to be able to easily mask off areas and assign those areas to certain materials. Because this geometry is like these features are not separate. Like, um, well, let's see, this might be separate. But some of these things are, are are just kind of baked in. Like this whole area there being being one mesh makes it very difficult to assign material IDs for each little feature. Like if I wanted this piece in here to be one material and this to be one material and these little bolts to be separate materials, that would all need to be done here at the high poly. But if you, uh, here, I'll just go ahead and We'll, we'll start off here and when you're when you're assigning material ID colors we're going to mesh display and then apply colors under vertex colors you want to make sure you're picking colors that are very very easy for machine eyes to distinguish and if for some reason you don't see 
your colors showing up. I'm going to just go to Attribute Editor and then Mesh Component Display and then just turn on your color display, right? Or display colors right here. So again, that's going to be, you know, select the object, go to Attribute Editor, um, find uh, the Mesh Component Display uh, drop down, expand it, and then just turn on display colors and you should see what you're looking for. So I have, um, we have five turned on right now and it's working just fine. It is a little bit tricky now though to see my colors, so I'm gonna have to just kind of do my best here. All right, so if you go around and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to randomly select whatever I can select and apply separate material IDs to those colors. And again, you can see nice, very, very distinct colors here. So like basically how this is going to work is like everything that is that I want to be whatever steel is going to be whatever the color is. So like if I want this to be one material, everything else that's red is going to have that same material. So within reason, I mean, I think you, you can, it's easy to go a little crazy. So you can see again, I, I guess this is not welded, which is, is actually in this case, not that bad. Kind of like that. It'll allow me to maybe, I don't know. I was going to say I could make the insides a different material, but I think if I was like really going to assume this is a real thing that this whole, this whole area here would probably be pretty consistent. I don't know if that worked. Let me try again. Oh, right. So I got to select all these things in here. And we'll hit apply. And then I think I'm gonna want this thing to be a different color. And I, you know, could totally come in and make some different decisions. Once I'm in Painter, it's actually not that difficult. All right, so I have burned through all of my very easy to ID ones. So I'll just grab a, a darker green for that stuff. You basically just don't wanna have like yellow and then light yellow and then pale yellow and whatever. Like, you know, the more the more variation you can have in your in your uh, material IDs, the better, the happier the uh, um, the bake is going to be. All right, so I've got this round thing is red and this round thing is red, so I'm going to change this to some other color. And this thing over here, because I'm thinking like, oh, the red things maybe those are like I don't know pivots or something. So they might be sort of a chromey or steel feeling color. All right, so because all the stuff in the back here, all these little bolts are welded in, it is not as easy to go in and just select them and assign a different material, but they're all round, so it shouldn't be too difficult to take care of that in, uh, in Painter. So I'll probably just leave that level of detail for that process. But otherwise, I think this is going to be, this is sufficient to, to get everything going. You can also separate items by mesh continuity. So this right here, even though it's the same material, it's a separate mesh. So it's actually pretty easy to assign uh, something uh, different to that. But I think this will be fine. This is a good starting point. You know, we're going to have to probably come in and maybe paint some of this stuff in, but it shouldn't be a big deal. So anyway, uh, I think at this point we are ready to move on to bakes.